All right, today uh, <clears throat> we're working on this little 60408 we've been uh, doing some videos on. We got last week, and I did, we didn't get to film any of it. Last week we got all the bearing clearances set, and uh, the customer come down, and he filed the rings, and we got the cam in, and we was getting ready to start degreeing it and get all of that stuff set up and he had bought a uh, Rollmaster timing set, a billet Rollmaster timing set and uh, we run into some interesting issues. Uh, stay tuned and we're going to do some uh, timing set comparisons and I'm going to show you what we found. Stay tuned. Alright, so I, I was very surprised. So personally, I, I've only used three or four or five uh, Rollmaster timing sets. And I've only used them um, probably in small block Chevrolet. It's been a really, really long time. And mostly we use, especially on the LSs, we use SA gear or Dyna gear. It's the same company. Uh, they've got a really nice billet set, and we've used them for, uh, I don't know, eight or nine years with zero failures. So, and they make they make a double and a single, but we pretty much just use singles and everything, unless it's, you know, some crazy solid roller or something, you know, we might use a double. But anyway, so... Uh, Last week, we, we put the uh, Rollmaster on, and the first thing I noticed was the bottom gear was just loose. I mean, it just slid right on the crank. <clears throat> and you see that some uh, with Fords, but you just almost never see it with Chevrolet stuff. Uh, so that was kind of a red flag, because I could actually wiggle it. I mean, it wasn't like it was just a perfect fit. I mean, it was actually loose. And then we put the timing set actually on and the chain was just as loose as a factory type chain. And the SA gear stuff is never like that. So uh, I'm like, man, that's, you know, that's pretty, I was t t talking to the customer, I was like, you know, that's pretty sketchy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put that junk in my motor, you know. So uh, we just pulled, uh, actually we were out and I had to order in some more, but we, we pulled a uh, SA gear set and I just done some preliminary checking this morning. So I'm going to bring you in here and we're just going to do a side-by-side -side comparison and we're going to go over it. And then when we finish that, I'm going to let this be a video just about these timing sets. And then we're going to get into uh, uh, this engine and we're going to degree the cam and some other stuff. And I think we're going to look at some valve motion and some piston location and valve location stuff with the cutaway head on this engine i think that'll be interesting so stay tuned and i'm gonna get you over here and we're gonna we're gonna look at these timing sets all right so on the left is the sa gear and on the right is the rollmaster now the rollmaster it looks you know it looks really nice um one thing that i noticed <clears throat> with the rollmaster is when you when you bring the chain around you can almost feel it like it's trying to rub the tooth beside it almost like the pitch or something ain't right i don't i don't know it's it's a little odd but it looks good um it does not say where it was made uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but they may be, I don't know where they made that. Let me look at the paperwork here. Australia. So they're made in Australia, whatever that's worth. All right. So that's that. Then the SA gear, and I don't know why, but I've just always noticed that that they just seem to, they just seem to roll better. I don't, I don't know. Um, the chains are very similar, but they're not definitely not the same chain. 
the way the link pinning is on the two is different. And I've had tons of these and, you know, pretty high horsepower LS stuff that's come in for freshening and that kind of stuff. And they're still nice and tight, uh, you know, after it's been run. And these are manufactured in the USA. Again, whatever that's worth. Uh, and uh, the SA gear is about 25 or $30 cheaper than the Rollmaster. So I'm going to come over here to the front of the motor and I'm going to show you about the, the bottom timing gear. All right, so that is the Rollmaster gear. So when you drop, I mean, it just, and again, I can, I can shake it. So, I mean, it's, it's a thousandths or two oversized. So that's, that's kind of cheese ball to me. And then the SA gear, uh, you know, again, both of them's billet. Uh, I think the fit and finish on the SA gear is nicer, but like even in, even in the non press fit area, like it's, it's there. And then when you get back to the press fit area, I mean, it, it's tight. You, you, you've gone, you're going to have to tap it on. It's not just going to go on there. And then, so the next issue, and I ain't worried about lining nothing up because it don't matter for this. So this is, again, this is the Rollmeister. And so, I mean, it's, I mean, it's definitely not tight and I swear, yeah, it's almost like when you roll it around, like they spots this looser than other spots. But like I say, the worst thing is the bottom gear is loose. That's the worst thing. So. That's that. And then we're going to put the, uh, the SA gear on. And then I'll show you that. So the, and this block's been line honed, but the chain tension is about the same on both of them. Uh, s most of them are pretty snug, but this block has been line honed twice. But, but generally speaking, most of these I put on are, are pretty, I mean, they're not banjo string tight, but, but they're pretty snug. This one's got a, a little bit of movement and but the other one did too so i would say the chain tension is about the same but the bottom gear i think is the issue for the most part i would just be scared and again it shouldn't be loose i mean there's no reason for it to be loose like that because then you're just depending on the balancer bolt torque to hold all of that together which is you know i mean i just like to have a second line of defense i mean i feel like a press fit and a keyway plus the balancer bolt torque is just much safer in the long run and then when you've got slop in it then it's going to center wherever it centers 
when you tighten it up. So then the bottom gear is going to have run out in it. I mean, again, not much because it's not much oversized, but it is oversized. So I just think that's cheese ball and that's just my take on it, <clears throat> especially for more money. So, you know, why would you pay more money for less quality in my opinion? So anyway, uh, I thought that would be an interesting comparison. Cause like I say, I've, I just haven't ever had one loose like that. That's kind of odd. And we even checked cause we thought maybe something was amiss with the crank. Cause you know, it's a new billet, I mean a forged crank and we took a factory gear and put it on and it, you know, it had press fit. So the cranks, you know, dead on size, there's no issue there. All right. All right. So hopefully that'll help you, uh, make a better decision when you need, uh, you know, when you're buying components, um, I just, you know, I see things and I share them with you and uh, just, you know, what we've used and what we've had success with. I'm not saying that that time and set won't live forever and do just fine, but I wouldn't put it in something that I'm putting together and that's just me. So other people may have other opinions and uh, experiences and that's perfectly fine but I've just had really good success with what we use. And when you see stuff like this, you know, it definitely, I don't mind trying new stuff for sure, but when you see something like that, it's like, yeah, we're just gonna keep doing what we're doing. But anyway, hopefully that was uh, informative. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the next one.